I think every bike has the has the power to sort of really liberate somebody and, and offer them a means of transport that's that's, that's free and, and joyful. Um, and I think if you can if you can resurrect a bike to let it do that, then I think you've, that's a job worth doing. So in the city, you're can feel isolated, you're walking around, no one really wants to make eye contact or smile, everyone's busy and focused and head down. You're on a bike, you see someone else on a nice bike, you can just give them a nod. You're at the lights, you might check out their wheels, say nice rims. <laughs> it's the most elemental kind of feeling, riding a bike and, and feeling wind and feeling under your own power. And... I've ridden bikes as long as I can remember um, and you know I still have the the same that, that same visceral joy that, that that I had when I was when I was three or four years old riding my first bike. Maybe it's the sense of being at one with the machine. Um, it's a very rewarding experience to have and maintain that bicycle. Being a transport policy um, is means that somebody can't get around. They can't. Uh, it might take them, you know, an hour and a half to walk from one place to the next. It might add. Yeah, it could easily add like two, three hours to their working day. Um, it could mean that they can't travel somewhere to get cheaper food or um, m make their way to, to a job. You know, a certain job might be off limits because it's just too far away to get by foot. Um, or they won't be able to afford the bus to get there. So um, bicycles really solve all of those problems by being essentially free. Yeah, bike projects are all about repairing and relocating unwanted, unused bikes in our community that take uh, bikes that people have donated to us. Um, we, our volunteers, uh, refurbish them and we give them out to people in the community. Um, and while doing that, teaching them the skills for them to maintain their own bikes. We have um, the Earn a Bike Scheme continues and works with a wide range of people who have barriers to employment. Uh, drop-in workshops, women's night, bike kitchen, um, cycle maintenance courses, uh, repairs, servicing and repairs and uh, we, we sell some of the second-hand bikes that are donated to us as well we fix up and repair those um, so we're yeah we've got a lot of bikes out there I set the project up with a friend of mine Colin we just cycled out to Scandinavia to do some work out there and had talked about uh, sort of setting up some sort of uh, charitable project bike project when we came back and um, I'd been volunteering at Bristol Refugee Rights and identified like a group of people that would really benefit from being you know, independently mobile and it not costing them anything. So it just went from there really. Started advertising for, for unwanted, unused bikes. Bikes started flooding in and then at one point I think I had like 15 bikes where I was living and having to climb over them to get into bed at night. It was crazy. Like it just showed how much of a resource it is, you know, and people want to get rid of these bikes in a useful way. So as I was working at Bristol Refugee Rights, realized that people there would you know, living a long, long way out of the city centre, but having to come into the city centre for various things that they were involved with, and were having to walk for a few hours, sort of every day. So it was just one way of making their their lives a little bit easier. Really, I'm an asylum seeker. I don't have a money. I'm not allowed to work in this country. So I am a human like you. I'm not an animal to stay in the same place. So I don't have money. I don't have pocket money in my pocket. Yeah. So in that way, the Bristol Bike Project. From there, I'm getting amazing help. They gave, they gave me a used bike in good condition. They made that bike and they give me in a good condition. So I'm riding my bike in different places. I'm doing my volunteer job and I'm doing. I'm seeing my friends as well. It's an amazing place for me. Nice place. It's really really useful for me and for the others just like who live like me. I don't have money to, to take a bus or taxi because I'm not allowed to work in this country. So yeah, I use my bike all the time. So you hear all these like little snapshots and glimpses of how it helps people in ways that I'd never never would have imagined originally. And now we, we get referrals from over sort of 60 organisations in and around Bristol, um, which extends to sort of groups with, work with people with mental health problems or substance abuses. A couple of years into the project was feeling like I was having to carry too much and do, do too much that was unpaid and just voluntary and balancing that. 
out and um, came close to sort of burning out at one point with that and just sort of deciding not to do it anymore. But then more people got on board and we were able, you know, different jobs were delegated to different people and that was spread out. And so we did overcome that. And I think we've still got a really good balance of that now. When, like, when Colin and I first started it five years ago and it was a very different uh, project, you know, we were really focused on just doing what we were at the moment, which was a sort of earn a bike program, which is still at the core of the project today. But then because so many other people have got involved and put so much energy and time into it, it's evolved into this really sort of multifaceted kind of organisation now that has lots of different programmes running um, and become really outward looking and inclusive. And that's, it's been really exciting to see that, see that happen. You've grown so much in the last few years that now there are paid staff, there's a board of directors, everyone has their own responsibilities and we're constantly refining who's in charge of what and what the roles are. My name is Pai, um, I'm a mechanic here in the shop at the Bristol Bike Project. As a mechanic here, everyday stuff of, um, of just struggling to, to get some, some bizarre part that's managed to weld itself into the frame, trying to remove that. Um, sort of there's always some sort of mechanical mechanical issue going on um, but normally there's not not really a bike that we can't coax back into life uh, so my name is Dan I'm community coordinator I got very sick a few years back uh, wanted to give something back afterwards and uh, that's when I saw a talk from uh, the chap who funded uh, founded this James Lucas and wanting to give something back knowing that I kind of like bikes I was fairly handy, quite quick at learning. I, I popped down and said, can I help out? Pretty soon I was volunteering three, four days a week um, just to kind of keep me active whilst rebuilding my uh, physical self. And here we are four years later, I'm in charge of a lot of things. I'm an acting director. I'm teaching kids and the underprivileged how to maintain their bikes. And uh, it's just great, yeah, <laughs> love it. So what we're doing now is the the brakes to see if they're all okay and their gears. First we have to undo the high and low shoes and then pedal and see if it like goes high or low. And then for the gears we're just testing the gears going like that. And that's doing practical practical work makes me I behave and it's fun. Yeah. It's more funner than work. You just get to know people, you break through these barriers, that, um, these labels that are kind of presented to you when you meet them. And so we built kind of a, a community feel to it all, so a lot of people who've come through and we've either helped or they've come here to help, it all kind of feeds back and uh, creates a nice little sense of family, I guess. I've got, I got, got loads of friends here and it just gets, you know, things up your mind, you know when you get away from everything. How I got into bikes, my my granddad learned me how to bear bikes. And I and I got like I got like experience I can show other people how to fix bikes. To me the most exciting thing about the project is the the real diversity of people and mix of people that, that come here and get involved and cross paths that wouldn't otherwise do so in that. Future of the Bike Project, I guess right now it feels like we, especially last year, we've, we started a lot of different sort of programmes here at the project, so I think we're in a period of consolidating a lot of those now and, and making sure they're sustainable and successful in their own right. There's always sort of new and exciting ideas sort of being talked about um, and different sorts of organisations approaching us to work with them. The first time I uh, did, an, did an earn a bike session, at the end of the session he said, do you know what, I've never had a bike before. For, for me at least, you know, that, that, that's like a rite of passage for a young person, is for them to, to, to be given their first bike at Christmas or you know, on their birthday. And it's, it's really, you know, when you first ride a bike, it, it stays with you. Like, tell me and I'll forget, show me and I may, may remember, involve me and I'll understand. And I, really like that kind of approach, that sort of outlook. So I feel like that's something we try and manifest here at the project wherever, wherever possible. How does cycling arouse me? Um, 
Anything else? Yeah. What? You guys got anything? Watch, watch where you go. What is the Bristol Bike Project? Oh. <laughs> That's really got me, what is it? You know, I like bikes. Um, it's a collection of fine beards and fine people <laughs> and some bikes. A lot of tools, a lot of grease, a lot of dirt. And they can come back and repair it whenever they like. Well, as long as it's on a Wednesday. <laughs> I like to think we keep uh, Bristol rolling, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, I'll cycle till my knees fall off. <laughs> mm -hmm.